It's now 11 o'clock on the morning of December 13th, 1862. We are now standing along the main Confederate battle line at the Sunken Road and the Stone Wall. Confederates here under the command of Brigadier General Thomas Reed Roots Cobb had about 3,000 troops lined up along a stone wall. As the Union troops came out of the city, they had to cross an open plain, every step of which was seen by these Confederates. Meanwhile, the Confederates had a number of advantages here. The stone wall was going to offer them protection. Among the 3,000 troops here, many of them were stacked up two or three ranks deep, so they were able to set up relays in which the man at the wall would constantly fire, and the men behind him would do nothing but load rifles and pass them forward. That was going to enhance their firepower and make them even more deadly. Compounding this is the fact that immediately behind the sunken road was Marie's Heights, a high position that was dominated with not only other infantry from North Carolina, but artillery from a vaunted unit called the Washington Artillery of New Orleans. Between these two sections, the Confederates really had two front lines that could fire simultaneously, putting almost 6,000 rifles against anybody who ventured out into this field. When the first Union attack came up against this spot, they only got within 100 yards before they were stopped dead and driven back. The second and third waves fared no better. General Burnside should have learned something from this. Instead, he ordered a second assault, which failed. So, he ordered a third assault, followed by a fourth, and a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. Not one of these Union attacks had any chance of success. Not one Union soldier even got to the stone wall that day. In fact, they didn't get within 50 yards of the stone wall. The Union Army lost 8,000 men attempting to capture this spot. The Confederates had very few casualties along the sunken road. In fact, only a thousand of them wound up getting hurt during the battle. Ironically, one of them was Brigadier General Thomas Cobb. He was hit by an artillery round that plowed right through the heart of the Stevens house and then exploded in the midst of his headquarters. He was hit in the left leg and it cut the femoral artery. He bled to death 20 minutes later. Though his troops kept discipline and were able to fight through the entire battle, even though they had a crisis in leadership. It wasn't evident to anyone.